Hi, this is Rob Graham, the Director of Training at Learning Craft, and this time around I want to show you how to create randomizing scripts in Flash. Now, basically a randomizer is just that. It's something that will bring up a random number that allows you to do different things with it. Now, it could be involved in things like gameplay, where you want to be able to roll the dice, and as a result you want to be able to know what the value of each die is in the process, and we could use a randomizer for something like that. The basic approach to randomizing is really to generate a number that you can use to do something else. So how do we generate this number? Well, to begin with, let's set things up a little bit for the purposes of our experiment here today. I'm going to go and grab just a very quick graphic. There we go. And this will be the basis for a button. To create this, I'm going to go up to my Modify menu, say Convert to Symbol, and uh, I'll make it into a button. We'll just name this something creative like Button 1. There we go. Now I'm not going to really play around with the uh, the over and down states for the button. I'm just going to use it as a trigger. And what I really want to do is I want to create a script that I can attach to this button that will give us some sort of an answer that we put in a field here. So I'm going to create a field and uh, let me just, there we go. That should be sufficient. Pull it down a little bit here. Okay. Now with regard to the field, just to let you know, um, the field that I'm using here, I'm setting as a dynamic text field. I don't want to have static text, and I don't really need input text. Dynamic text allows the computer to write content to this field. Input text would allow an end user to put something into this field. So dynamic is where I want to be. Now in order for me to talk to the field or to put content in the field, I need to refer to it by its name. There are two places that you can name fields, and they're actually different. One we have right here is an instance name, and one we have here is a variable name. And let me explain the difference to you very quickly. The instance name allows you to talk to the physical field itself. So for example, if I wanted to create some sort of a script that would move this object around or refer to this object, then I would put it here in the instance name and I would use it that way. However, if I want to talk to the content inside the field, regardless of where on the screen it ends up, then I will talk to its variable name. So in this case, let's just give it some sort of creative name like uh, input field. Ah, how about randomizer field? Okay. Now I'll also point out that the names that you use for your variables are case sensitive, which means that I have a capital R and a capital F in my name randomizer field. And if I want to make a reference to this field anywhere along the way, I have to make sure that I keep the same nomenclature, the same uppercase and lowercase combinations. Otherwise, it won't understand what I'm trying to tell it to do. Now to begin with, I just want to create a script that will allow me to put a random number in this field. So I'm going to select my button here and go into my Actions button window. Because it's a button, I need to use some sort of a way to trigger things. So I'm going to set the criteria for what starts the script running. And I'm going to say, hey, when the user releases the mouse button on top of this, then I want you to go and do the following. Well, what we want to do at this point is I'm going to create a variable. And a variable, if you're not familiar with one, is really just a container that we can put some data into. And I can name my variable pretty much anything I want. Let me call it random bucket. There we go. And I'll spell random right just, uh, just this once. Okay, so random bucket. Now, I've gone and declared and basically magically said, I have a container, and now I want to put some information into it. And the information I would want to put in this bucket is really going to be based upon a mathematical function that we can do with an action script. And what that is, is we can go out and say, hey, roll the dice for me. But instead of saying a six-sided die, we can say, you know, I have a 500-sided die, and I want you to roll a number up for me. And the way we do randomized building is it's a math function. So we start by putting in a capital M math and we follow it by a period. And what we're basically saying is I want to do a math function and the math function I want to do, and we can go through the scrolling list that comes up and look for what we want. And we want this guy here, which is random. Now I can go and type in the same thing if I want. Sometimes it saves a little time if you're a fast typist. And what this is saying, okay, I want you to take the math random of the number I'm about to give you, and what we're going to do is put that value here in what we've called random bucket or random bucket here. Let's go make sure we spell things very correctly. Now I go and I put in a multiplication symbol because this will take the content and allow it to be broken down. And then I decide what number it is I want to use as my randomizer. Now let's just say for the sake of our example that we want to create uh, a die. We're going to create some sort of game where you can roll a die and get a number from 1 to 6. If I structure it like this, the way randomizers work within ActionScript is that they always start at zero. So the answer that's going to come back if I run a random of 6 is 0 through 5. 
Now, I don't know about you, but the last time I played a board game, zero rarely comes up as one of the values we want on a die. And the way we get around this when we create randomizers, if we want our numbers to always be above zero, is simply by adding a one to whatever answer the randomizer comes up with. So in this case, a value of six will generate a random number of zero through five. So if we just say, oh, by the way, add a one to it, then anything that gets generated will automatically have a one added to it as the final answer. And so that will give us the values of one through six. Okay, now let me put a semicolon here. And what I can do now is I'm going to say, okay, we have this content that we've put together over here. We've gone and generated a random number of six, and we've put it in this thing called random bucket. What I need to do now is I need to display it so I can see that value. Basically, I want to click on the button, and I want to see the value displayed for me. So I go and I take the field name, which is randomizer field. Once again, I remember where my capitals are. And I say, okay, what I want you to do is I want you to make that equal to whatever the current value of this variable random bucket is. Right? So I'm basically taking one pile and I'm moving it into another pile. And this is going to allow me to see it. And that's the extent of my script right there. I'm going to go and close this off, make sure all my typos have been taken care of. I can also click here on the check syntax blue check mark that tells me if anything has gone terribly wrong. And it looks like we're good to go. So I'm going to go out of here and go back to my main stage here, and I'm going to run this. Now, once again, when I click on this, I hope to get a random value of 6. And I'm going to click, and there it is. It's telling me 4.1190, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now if I click it again, there's a 3, and there's another 3, and there's a 6, and there's a 2, and there's a 6, and there's a 2. Now, we're getting the numbers that we want, but boy, there's a heck of a lot of data here that we really don't need. All we really want when we roll the die is to get a whole number. And we have a decimal point with lots and lots of trailing values, which might come in handy if we're trying to land something on the moon, but playing a board game, not nearly as important. So let me show you how we might take care of this. And once again, if I go into my button, what I can do is I can modify my randomizing script so that it basically will truncate the decimal and all the trailing information. And the way we do that in ActionScript is I'm going to put another math function in here. So I'm going to say math. And the function I'm putting in is something called floor. And floor is basically a way of saying just kind of chop it off at the floor. We don't need to have anything beyond a certain point. In order for this to work, however, I need to make sure that I put the first value in parentheses. That's what I'm doing now. And as you may remember from algebra, way back somehow in the recesses of your mind, there's something called order of operation. And basically the content that takes place inside the parentheses goes first and then that gets applied. So the whole focus we want now is generate a random number of six, add a one to it, and then truncate it. Now put all that value in a random bucket and we should be good to go. Now let's go test our project one more time. We can go in here and say, there, one and four and five and four and two. And so now it's much more like we're rolling an actual die with the answer that we get up. Now, there are a couple other things I want to show you very quickly. First of all, we can go in and put a variety of different numbers in here. There's nothing to prevent me from going in here and saying, give me the random value of one million. And of course, it gives us a lot of different possibilities. Oftentimes, however, there's a range of numbers that you want to work with. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, that what you want to generate is a number that's no, no less than 30, but no greater than 80, for whatever reason for the project. Now, to figure the range of numbers for a randomizer that might allow us to get an answer between the values of 30 and 80, we need to figure out pretty much the absolute value of the numbers that we're using. Now, don't let this confuse you. Basically, what we want to be able to say is, what is a possible number that can come up, and how do we get the range we want? Well, if we do an absolute value breakdown, we take 80 and we subtract 30 from it, the value we get is 50. Now, if I ran a randomizer of 50, I'm going to get the possible answers of 0 through 49. In order to get to 30 to 80, I can add a number to that. So in this case, I could go in here and I could say, well, anything that comes up, if we just add 30 to it, we'll get the number that we want. So in this case, if it comes up with 0, we have 30. If it comes up with 49, we now have 79. And that would work for our purposes as well. Once again, it's all truncated. Let's just see the numbers that we do generate when we run the program this time. And we should be having pretty much everything that we create is going to be roughly between the values of 30 and 80. 
So for the most part, we can go in and create a range if you don't want anything less than a certain point or anything larger than a greater point, just figure out the absolute value between those two variations and you should be good to go. Feel free to go out and play around with it. It takes a while to wrap your mind around how to do this, but uh, hopefully this will save you an awful lot of time in getting up to speed with using randomizers. And as always, if there's anything those of us at LearningCraft can do to help you out with your training needs, whether it be in interactive media or in creating online advertising and marketing campaigns, please let us know. We can be reached online at www.learningcraft.com. This is Rob Graham. Thanks so much for your time, and I hope to see you real soon.